Why does the water in Sea of Thieves look so good? Hi, my name's Thomas, and welcome back to Stylized Station. Back in the day, creating water used to be pretty simple. Artists would just use a flat plane and scroll two or three normal maps across the surface to mimic waves. And while we can see that happening on the surface of the water of Sea of Thieves, these waves are much more different than these waves. It's clear that there's no animation happening to the water whatsoever. So I started to wonder, how is this being done in Sea of Thieves? Now, if you watched my How Water Works video, we learned about vertex displacement, which makes it possible to control the positions of a mesh's vertices via a shader. The CPU maintains the original positions of the mesh's vertices, but when it passes those values to the GPU to be presented to our eyeballs, those vertex positions are hijacked and displaced by the shader, creating new and dynamic geometry. But how does that translate into convincing looking water? Sure, you could probably take a simple height map and pan it in your water material to displace the geometry, but that would create really predictable and repetitive waves and wouldn't give you the collision and crashing of the waves that you see in Sea of Thieves. This is where Gerstner waves come in. Simply put, the Gerstner formula is a calculation that simulates the behavior of ocean movement by using a sine wave. One on its own creates a pretty basic wave, but by adding several of these waves together at different intervals and magnitudes, you can create a surface that ripples exactly like the waves of an ocean. The really cool thing I learned about Gerstner waves is that the equation uses several different constants that allow artists to control many different factors, such as the distance between waves, the wave height, and even the steepness of the waves. This means that with a node-based software like Unreal Engine 5, you could turn those constants into parameters and dynamically change the values on the fly in real time, meaning you can create anything from calm churning waters near the shore or massive crashing waves you see in a storm while you're playing Sea of Thieves. This is why a simple height map just doesn't work. Gerstner waves describe the surface points moving in 3D, not just up and down. This means that in a Gerstner wave, the vertices of the water mesh get squished towards the wave crests and stretched at the lowest points, creating very natural looking wave motion. Height maps only allow up and down motion. To get this working in Unreal Engine, you can add the equation via material shaders. Using Unreal Engine, you can create multiple Gerstner waves in your material shader and blend them together with slightly different values. Plug the result into your world displacement socket in your water material, and after adding some scrolling normal maps to your micro detail, you're pretty much done. Now, this isn't exactly a perfect solution. To have good looking animated mesh, the mesh needs to be well tessellated or have lots of triangles, which means many more vertices need to be drawn by the shader, potentially resulting in poor performance. But there's a very interesting way around this. By measuring the distance from each triangle to the camera, you can reduce the tessellation of the mesh at further distances, meaning the further away the geometry is from the camera, the fewer triangles that get rendered resulting in much better performance. These techniques aren't only exclusive to Sea of Thieves. Other games like Batman and Assassin's Creed Black Flag all create displaced geometry using formulas like Gerstner waves to generate insane looking waves. Of course, these games layer in a ton of other cool stuff like foam, spray VFX, and another cool wave function that even takes wind direction and speed into account. But that's gonna have to be another video. So yeah, that's it. I hope you learned something. <laughs>